the Joe Rogan experience. How many times has a dude come up to you and went, insane in the membrane? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> It, it almost every, almost almost where everywhere we go if I catch eye contact <laughs> and sometimes if I don't catch eye contact they'll wait for me to walk by and they'll and then they'll 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 sing it or they'll or they'll call me Cypress yo Cypress <laughs> that's been my name in New York for a long time yo Cypress because sometimes they don't know the all of our names, they but they they know what group we're in, so right. you know they won't say hey, be real or Doctor Green. Hey, yo, Cypress, that's Let's awesome. crack it. <laughs> that's kind of awesome, though. Yeah, I got a lot of names. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I remember when you guys first came out. I was like, this is a totally new kind of sound. Like you guys had a totally new kind of sound. I remember I found out about it. Like I wasn't even into weed back then. I was like, "Why is this weed symbol everywhere? What are these guys doing? <laughs> these rappers with weed? What the hell's happening over there?" But uh, I remember listening. I'm like, "This is a, you guys had a completely different kind of sound." Yeah, you know the thing was is that Muggs was from New York. He was from Flushing, so a lot of his influence was from New York. You know, his favorite production was like the Bomb Squad, which were, were producing Public Enemy and all their shit. They yeah. had like some of the most complex production at the time with bridges and breaks and these crazy sounds and stuff like that so you know that's what mugs got down with now when he moved out here and we, we we start hanging out he's introducing us to new york music you know hip-hop music that we we heard we heard some of it via the radio on kday an am station it was playing a lot of uh hip-hop in the mix and some of it uh, mixed with R and B and soul throughout the day, so this is where we got our first introduction to hip hop. But Mugs, being from New York, whenever he'd go back, he'd come back with new records and he'd introduce us to stuff like that. And so when it came time to 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 working on an album, he had all that influence and you know being from New York and absorbing all that culture, it sounded sort of like New York style production mixed with a little bit of LA influence, especially with, you know, what Sen and I were kicking in terms of vocals, because we were using a combination of LA and New York slang, you know, merged as one. So that's why a lot of people were confused, like, where are these guys from? Oh, you ask people in New York, they thought we were from East New York, and they were from Cypress Hills, New York. And people that that were from LA, they were like, well, wait a minute, they kind of sound West Coast-ish. I think they're from out here, but they didn't really know until we came out and said, you know, yeah, we're from LA, our boys from New York, and we're sort of a bridge, you know, mm. between LA and New York with the sound. So yeah, it was always a, a, a New York influenced sound because I mean, that's where he was from. But I think that that's what added to us being different because most things that were coming out of Los Angeles in that time or Southern California sounded like gangster rap, sounded like, uh, you know, uh, a version of N.W.A. or Compton's Most Wanted or something like that. And we didn't we wanted to be different. We didn't want to be in that lane. You know, we felt that was their lane. We need to make our own. So we didn't want to sound like anything else that was in Cali. We didn't get signed by it. A California label like whether it was Sony or any of it we got turned down here because we didn't sound like we were from from California isn't we didn't that sound, funny yeah and how short-sighted yeah, people are and it turned out that like our 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 uh well we call him Uncle Joe Joe the Butcher who was based out of Philly he had a you know his label with Rough House with uh Chris Swartz he he had worked with Muggs on a on an album that when Muggs was in a group called Seven Eight Three. He knew Muggs's potential. He liked Muggs. He saw that, you know, he was evolving as a producer. He heard about our thing and he wanted to take a chance on us, where we were getting turned down from every goddamn label in in L. A. They funny? just they just didn't understand us. They, you guys are talking about weed. <laughs> How, how does this make sense? What have you got any other songs? We're like, no, we're cool. And yeah. We, I went to get high. <laughs> yeah. We're sitting so there. High. They're eating lunch, <laughs> listening to a song about getting high. They're like, what the fuck is this? Um, or no, we didn't even have that song yet. It was, we were talking about, uh, it was uh, the get high song on there was um, Light Another and something else. But Light Another was a mm. main one. And we're talking about it. That's one of the demos that played. And, 
you know, th- that you could see the execs just scratching their head, like, what do we do with this? Mm. I mean, it, like. Isn't it funny that everybody wants everything to be cookie cutter? Yeah. Like the idea that rap didn't even exist a few decades prior, right? It wasn't even a common thing. And now all of a sudden it's huge and they can't see that maybe there's another branch of this that could, I mean, it's funny that they wouldn't be, they wouldn't recognize how good it is. That's what's weird. What it is, is, is they don't want to take a chance on trying to develop it because if it fails, it's on their back. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they want something that's easy that oh, like, oh, it's this sounds like this. We can market it in this lane. This is already a successful template. Let's use this. Oh, they're not using that shit. We can't do nothing with it. So, you know, like it's the development. And fortunately, you know, when we got assigned to Rough House Columbia, we had the power of 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 Columbia backing us up because they sort of believed in what what we were doing. Well, they not sort of believed, they believed in what we were doing and got behind it and allowed us to be as creative as we wanted to be and and, and pushed us. And, and uh, you know, along with having Joe and Chris on our side, creatively like pushing our line and saying, hey, what these guys are doing great, we're, we don't want to intervene and, you know, change anything they're doing. Just let them fucking go. I mean, that was everything because, you know, most of the time they want an easy layup. So mm. if let's just say, you know, there's a group over here that's doing well. Hey, how come? Why don't we make a record like this right. over here? Right. It's like, well, why don't you go sign that shit over there? <laughs> this is not who we are. So, you know, they want you to make it easy. But realistically, it's no, nothing good is ever easy. You got to work toward it and develop it. Unfortunately, you know, we got on the team that that believed in that. And man, it was the biggest fuck you <laughs> to all those that turned us down and didn't get what we were doing. Uh, they got it now. Y'all got it now, right? <laughs> you got it now. 